In this video, we'll be looking at price elasticity of supply. So we're going to be looking at what it is, uh, the factors that are going to affect price elasticity of supply. So what's going to cause the supply for a product to be more price elastic or more price inelastic. Um, and then we're going to see how we can show this on a diagram and also calculate price elasticity of supply. So when we looked at the idea of supply generally, we said that producers would respond to changes in price. So if price was to increase, producers are going to be incentivized to increase their quantity supplied in order to take advantage of the higher prices, which will deliver them higher profits. Uh, with price elasticity of supply, we're talking about just how responsive that quantity supplied is to those changes in price. And because with some products, quantity supplied is going to be quite responsive. So it's going to respond quite quickly and quite easily to, to those changes in price. And we call those products price elastic, or we say they have price elastic supply. And for others, quantity supplied is going to be relatively unresponsive to changes in price. So it's going to take producers a little bit longer um, to respond to any price changes. Um, and we talk about price inelastic supply for those products. And finally, we might also mention products which have unitary price elasticity of supply. And those are products for which you get um, a change in price and that leads to a proportional change in quantity supplied. So, for example, a 10% increase in price would lead to a 10% increase in quantity supplied. So there are a few factors that will determine whether that supply for a product is likely to be more price elastic or more price inelastic. And I'd say probably the most important of these is, is about time. How long does it take to make the product? And the longer it takes, the more price inelastic supply is likely to be. So take a, a hot dog manufacturer, a company that makes hot dogs, and imagine the market price of hot dogs were to increase quite significantly they could probably increase their production quite rapidly. So they could respond to that price increase quite quickly. So um, supply for, for that type of product would be more likely to be price elastic. But if you take a manufacturer of passenger jets and you imagine that um, airlines are willing to pay a lot more for passenger jets and the price of those was to increase, then they can't just increase their quantity supplied of passenger jets really, really quickly. It's going to take years probably for them to expand that production and increase the quantity supplied. So the supply for those sorts of goods is more likely to be price inelastic. Uh, there are a few other factors as well. So you might have the avail availability, mobility of factors of production. Um, so for some goods, it's um, firms have a lot of available workers that they can just call on to expand their supply. And particularly this is the case if it's quite easy to switch workers from other production into the production of those goods. So that would probably work actually with the same example as well. Um, I imagine it would be relatively easy to switch workers from producing other similar foodstuffs into producing hot dogs. Whereas production of passenger jets is quite specialised, um, so it's more difficult to, to call on sort of engineers and those um, factors of production and that quite specialised labour. And so the supply for those sorts of goods, again, is likely to be more price inelastic. Whereas if it's easier to call on those factors of production, um, then supply is likely to be more price elastic. And finally, here we've got the availability of the stocks of a product. So if you've got lots of available stocks or a business has lots of available stocks of a product that they can just release as price increases, then it's more likely to be price elastic. And this is the reason why a lot of agricultural output quite often is relatively price inelastic in supply, because a lot of the output is quite perishable. So you can't store it for long periods of time. Um, and then just release that output as price increases. So that makes it more price inelastic. And so your formula for calculating price elasticity of supply, then you take your percentage change in quantity supplied and divide it by a percentage change in price. And that's going to give you your coefficient, which this time is always going to be positive. And the reason for that is because of the, the direct relationship between um, the change in price and the change in quantity supplied. So if price was to increase here, then quantity supplied is going to increase here because of that uh, producer's response to the incentives of rising prices. If the price was to decrease, then the quantity supplied is going to decrease in response. So you're always going to have a positive figure. If that figure is greater than one, then that's showing us 
price elastic supply and that's because price elastic supply is when quantity supplied is very responsive to changes in price so your figure at the top of the formula is going to be bigger than your figure at the bottom of the formula which is going to give you a value greater than positive one price inelastic supply is when the change in quantity supplied is going to be um, smaller in relation to the change in price and so that's going to give you a value of between naught and positive one um, unitary it's going to be equal to one because you're going to be doing for example a 10 percent change in price causing a 10 percent change in quantity supplied which is always going to give you a figure of one and then our kind of theoretical extremes for price elasticity of supply perfectly inelastic would give you a value of zero because any change in price is going to have no impact at all on quantity supplied and then at the other extreme you've got perfectly elastic supply um, where changes in price are going to have infinite impact impacts on um, quantity supplied and so um, positive infinity would be your value for perfectly elastic supply and so just to look at a, a quick example then for price elasticity of supply imagine you've got a manufacturer of t-shirts uh, the price of t-shirts increases from eight pounds to ten pounds and that results in a 50 percent increase in quantity supplied in response to that well how do we work that out well first of all we need to work out the percentage change in price which quite simply there you can see is 25 percent um, and then we take our 50 percent increase in quantity supplied divide it by our 25 percent increase in price which gives us a value of positive two price elasticity of supply always going to be positive um, so positive two and that shows that we've got price elastic supply for t-shirts so it's relatively easy for the t-shirt manufacturers to respond to that increase in price by increasing their quantity supplied and um, the value um, being greater than one shows us price elastic supply and thinking about how you could apply those different interpretations for price elasticity of supply onto our supply curve diagram. Uh, firstly, relatively elastic supply, price elastic supply, you would see a relatively shallow gradient to your supply curve. And so that's showing you that relatively small increase in price would read along to quite a significant increase in your quantity supplied on your supply curve diagram. Uh, compared to that, relatively inelastic supply would show even quite big changes in price, having only quite small impacts on the quantity supplied. So that is a steeper gradient of curve. And then you've got your extremes with perfectly elastic supply. Um, that is going to be a horizontal line. So even, for example, the most fractional decrease in price would take quantity supplied immediately to zero. And then finally, you've got your perfectly inelastic supply, which is going to be a vertical line. So any change in price um, along this axis is going to have no impact at all on your quantity supplied.